So kidney issues are very, very, very common <laughs> in cats. And we want to talk about that a little bit today because there are some things that you need to know. Well, hello, pet parent. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And this is the Pet Parenting Reset, where we talk about all things dog training, behavior, uh, dog and cat enrichment and nutrition, all the things to make sure your pet is living their happiest, healthiest life. So as I said, in this video, we are talking about kidney issues in cats. Now they are rampant, like most cats today, it seems are being affected with kidney issues. So I wanted to kind of break this down. We're first gonna talk about a couple of things that are true with most cats today living in homes as pets that are detrimental to kidney health. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about some things we can do to help mitigate um, the, the kidney issues that our cats are experiencing. So let's first talk about these really two things that I, I, I really want to make you aware of, one of which I just recently learned from Dr. Will Falconer, so I'm gonna start with this one. The first one being that the vaccines that our pets are getting, so vaccines for cats specifically, they have to be created in a lab. And in order for them, they, they have to grow whatever it is that they are trying to vaccinate against. Let's just take um, rabies, for example. So they need to grow the virus in the lab to be able to create the vaccine for the virus. And the way they do that is by using feline kidney cells. So we're kind of, before I go too, too much further, I am not anti-vaccine, I am, anti-over vaccination and I think there are more appropriate ways to vaccinate our pets but that's not the topic of today's video. Um, Dr. Will Falconer recently sent out an email and I read through his blog post, I say recently, I was going through old emails so I don't know how recent it was but um, he, he has a couple of different blog posts on this and they use, for the feline vaccines, they use feline kidney cells to grow the viruses so that they can create the vaccines. Now, the reason why this is important for me to mention is because the way a vaccine works is that a dead virus is injected into your cat and the cat then produces an immune response to that virus. So the body can then say, okay, this is bad. I need to attack it and kill it. And now I have a blueprint for this virus. If I'm ever in contact with this, this specific virus again, I know how to kill it. That's in a nutshell how a vaccine works. And the sort of not so awesome side effect of the fact that these vaccines were grown in feline kidney cells is that there's an imprint now when your cat receives that vaccine. Um, and I will link Dr. Will Falconer's blog post in the description of this video so you can go back and read it. Dr. Will Falconer is, um, he has been a veterinarian for many, many years, um, over three, possibly four decades. And so this isn't just me making this up. Um, definitely check the link in the description for his blog post. But it's also not only imprinting that, you know, now the cat knows how to attack and kill that virus, but because it was grown in feline kidney cells, um, it's also kind of setting up for the cat to attack its own kidney cells. So this, of course, can take a lifetime sometimes to, to really show cats can be sick for a long time before we know about it. Cats can be ill, cats can have not so great kidney or liver function. Lots of things can be going on in your cat's body and we don't know about it for quite some time. This is one of the reasons why it is so important to get those annual um, blood tests done so that your veteran, you and your veterinarian have, okay, this is, this is a progression of where your cat is and how things are changing over time and as they become seniors or even if they become ill before they're seniors getting it done every six months at least is going to be so crucial and making sure you're staying on top of your cat's health um, so that's one thing i want you to be aware of we're kind of setting our cats up to 
to, to not do so great in the kidney area, right? Um, but that isn't a death sentence, right? It doesn't mean that um, your cat is for sure going to have kidney problems because of vaccines. I, I'm not at all saying that. Um, I just want you to be aware of this issue. And this is one of the two things that's happening in our cat's lives that are really, really detrimental to their kidneys specifically. So moving on to the second thing that is almost all cats, not all, but almost all cats are, that are living in homes with us as pets are experiencing is that they are eating dry food that we call kibble. Now, why is this so bad? Well, I've talked about it many, many, many times in the past, so you can certainly go back to other videos uh, on my channel and learn about that. But, of course, there's, you know, that it's not really great quality, yada, 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 all the things I've talked about before. But what I really want to pinpoint here is the lack of moisture. So, cats don't drink a whole lot of water. They are supposed to get 70 plus percent of their daily intake of water through their diet and this is something that for most cats they're not going to drink extra water just because they're eating a dry diet it's not how they're built it's not how they're designed they're desert animals so when they are not getting moisture from their diet it is setting their kidneys up to fail because the kidneys need moisture to function properly. So if your cat has gone a lifetime in a dehydrated state because they're not getting moisture from their diet or they're not getting enough moisture from their diet, yes, this is going to affect their kidneys. Now, let's talk about some of the things that we can do now today to help our cats. First and foremost, regardless of whether your cat, you're, you're just getting a cat and you're doing a whole bunch of research, or you have a cat that is already um, having kidney issues, showing signs of kidney disease, we can do these things to help our cats out. First and foremost is getting moisture into the diet. We need to help the kidneys. Of course, ideally we would love to transition to a species appropriate diet, meaning that your cat would eat what they're designed to eat, right? Which is a balanced raw food diet. Now, if you are dealing with an older cat, I understand this is harder to do. And for some people also financially, it's not going to be an easy transition. If we can't get our cats onto a moisture rich, biologically appropriate, species appropriate raw food diet, the next best thing we can do for our cat is get them on a high quality wet food because that at least is going to be adding moisture into their diet and that is going to help the kidneys function better. Now for some cats we will need, especially if they are already showing a lot of signs and their kidney disease is, has escalated, we might need to learn from our veterinarian how to give sub-Q fluids or subcutaneous fluids. Now, I have done this in the past. I don't love doing it. I've had to do it for a couple of my cats in the past, and it is something that there is definitely a learning curve, but your veterinarian can show you how to do it. And it is something that you can do at home if necessary, but we need to get moisture into our cat and ideally through their diet. The next thing we wanna do is to, if we can, again, with getting them on a species appropriate, biologically appropriate, moisture rich diet, we're, we are, we're also going to be getting them better quality food in general when we switch to a diet like this, but getting them better quality food is going to be very important. Also, there are some supplements, some supplementing that we can do. There are some detoxing that we can do. Um, I don't love advising people, especially in a platform like this, on detoxing their pets because it really is, there is no one size fits all, but I will put a link in the description below to my favorite products for not only um, like, a, like a multivitamin type, but also for detox. and. Uh, they were called Vital Animal Health and now they have rebranded to Vengeance, 
I think is how you pronounce it. It's a funky word, um, but they are products that I personally use and recommend. There are also some really great products from Adored Beast Apothecary. Um, their Rebalancer specifically is something that you can use to prepare your pet if you do have to give vaccines um, to support them prior to and after a vaccination. So there's, there's a lot that we can do to support our pet, even if they already have kidney disease, um, that you may not hear directly from your veterinarian. Now there's one more thing that I wanna talk about specifically with kidney disease in cats, and that is that more often than not, your veterinarian is gonna to recommend to put your cat on a prescription diet. Now I have done videos on prescription diets in the past. There is no medicinal value to these. Um, the word prescription is kind of a misnomer because they are, even though you can't get them outside of your veterinarian's office, uh, generally, or without a prescription, there's no medicinal value to these whatsoever. The idea behind a prescription kidney diet is that it's going to be low protein, low phosphorus. Those are the two of the big things. Um, and one thing that I really want you to know is that as an obligate carnivore, even with, even with kidney disease, cats have been shown and absolutely 100% in my mind, and in many others, if you, again, uh, check the link in the description to Dr. Will Falconer's um, blog post on this, he will tell you the exact same thing over many, many, many years and multiple decades of practicing. Cats always do better on a high protein, high quality protein diet, even with kidney disease, and, and almost especially with kidney disease, as long as we are providing them species appropriate diets, species appropriate foods, they do better with high protein because they are obligate carnivores. So when we decrease the protein content that our cats get, we start, we start breaking down other processes, right, in the body because they are obligate carnivores and they need high quality protein, animal protein to survive. Also with the idea that a cat with kidney disease needs less phosphorus in the diet. Oh, this is both true and not true. Let me explain. In the event where your cat is eating a low to no moisture dry food kibble diet, most of the nutrients in that food are synthetic um, vitamins and minerals. Now, when we are feeding these synthetic vitamins and minerals in this low to no moisture food, yes, we would want to keep phosphorus low. However, when we are feeding a moisture rich, species appropriate, biologically appropriate, high animal protein diet, there is no need to keep phosphorus low because now if you think back to, to you as a human, how often have you heard, have you even heard your doctor tell you that whole foods are better than supplements? Hands down, the way our body uses uh, whole foods to derive nutrients is night and day different from how our body attempts to utilize nutrients from supplements, especially when they are synthetic. Same is true for our dogs and our cats. So when they are getting their nutrition from whole food, from high quality animal protein, they are totally fine with the amount of phosphorus that they are getting. Now, again, this is kind of a generalization and I am not in any way telling you what to do or um, how to handle your cat. This is for informational and educational purposes so that you have more knowledge moving forward because an empowered pet parent can do better for their pets. So those are pretty much all of the like hot topic po uh, points that I wanted to get across to you. And please know, please understand that as a pet parent myself, um, I have had many, many, many cats. I'm currently down to four cats. Um, but at the, at the most in my life, I had 12 indoor cats on my own, taking care of them. And that was back when I didn't know better when I was feeding uh, kibble because I, and I was following every recommendation from my veterinarian, I did not know better. 
and my evolution to today is night and day and I want that for you too so understand that I have been through it all I have been through it not all but I've been through so many things with my cats and I have been through kidney disease with multiple cats so I'm not standing here I'm I'm <laughs> I'm getting emotional I am not sitting here telling you things that I have not lived through I have lived through all of these things so please understand that it is with all the empathy in the world that I am providing this information to you that being said before I get too teary-eyed I'm gonna end this video <laughs> Oh, I have to cry. I have to laugh or I'm going to cry. So I wish the absolute best for you and your cat. Um, if you are interested, I do offer behavioral consultations. I am not a nutritionist. However, for most pet parents, I can help. Um, I'm just putting that out there. I do offer services for both dogs and cats. I also offer online uh, training services for dogs. So um, all of that, if you go to my link tree, which is in the description, and, and uh, again, if you don't want it, no problem. But if you do, if you want to reach out to me, I do offer online services in my link tree. It's under, uh, uh, <laughs> what is it under? It's under services. <laughs> um, if you also, if you get on my email list, um, it's in my, there's, there's a link in my weekly newsletter. So you can sign up for that as well. I also hope that you follow the podcast if you're not already. It's the same name, the Pet Parenting Reset. And wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google, all the places, and um, Patreon. If you have not already joined me on Patreon, I so hope you do. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. You get extra content, bonus content. Um, you get content that I put out before I put it anywhere. Like you get it way, way, way in advance of the general public getting it. So with that, I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope this was helpful and empowering. That is so important because when we know better, we can do better. Please give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time, bye guys.